In this video, we're going to be talking about audible track circuits. When travelling on the railways in the UK, you most likely at some point would have heard this sound. What is that sound? It sounds like some sort of whining or maybe some sort of an alarm. Is it an alarm to tell workers when it's safe to cross the tracks? No, it's not. This is actually an audible track circuit. So let's start off the video with discussing what is a track circuit. A track circuit is used to detect if a train is or is not present on a particular bit of track. A track circuit is created as the two rails of the track are made of metal and the train's wheels are made of metal. This creates a circuit. So you can run electricity in one of the two rails and as the train travels along that bit of track, you can then detect the presence of that electricity in the other rail. Except it's actually quite a bit more complicated due to a number of reasons. 1. Railway tracks are not insulated and are not intended or designed to be used as an electrical circuit. This means the whole track circuit system is more like detecting the presence of an electrical signal rather than more of a traditional circuit. Number two, on electrified track, there's a lot of electricity running into the main running rails. Electricity comes from the third rail or from the overhead line. It's then used in the train and then all of that voltage and current is then dumped into the main running rails and the main running rails are used as neutral. This means there's a lot of voltage and current in these rails, but the track circuit still has to run separate to this and still has to detect the presence of the track circuit electrical signal irrelevant to whether there's a load of voltage and current being dumped down the main rails or not. Also, it has to work irrelevant to whether the train is an electric train dumping loads of voltage and current down into the main rails or a diesel train which wouldn't be doing this. Number three, in the past on railways, there was rail gaps. On old fashioned railways, the rail gaps were used in the track circuit and certain rail gaps had insulating fish plates. And at the point where there's insulating fish plates, the circuit couldn't travel beyond this point. And you used this to define the end of one track circuit and the start of the next. But in the modern day, we have continually welded track. This means you can't have a precisely defined start and end to each track circuit. So in the modern day, you do the track circuit using resistance. As the train approaches a detector for the track circuit, the resistance gets less and less. This is because the rails have a certain amount of resistance and as the train gets closer to the detector, the resistance goes down as the circuit is made closer and closer to the detector. Then when it reaches a certain threshold, the detector then changes its state from no train on the track to there is a train and then the train goes past the detector and then further on down the line as the train then travels away, the, the resistance will be getting more and more as it's, as it's now covering more amount of rail distance to the train until it reaches a certain threshold when the detector then changes its mind and now says there's no longer a train present on the track. Also, because of the continually welded track, there's loads of detectors along the track and each detector has to use a different electrical signal so that the different detectors do not conflict with each other. And it's because of this precise signal that each detector uses so that the detector can identify its own signal without interrupting, interfering or detecting the other detector signals is where you need a certain signal for each different detector. Now, in the modern day, as transistors have got better and better improved in technology, these sort of things happen at very high frequencies, outside of the frequencies of human hearing. But in the more early days of transistors, loads of different things, including things like VF drives and lots of other topics, but also on the topic of track circuits, these kinds of things were done at a lot lower frequencies simply because the transistors were more of an early technology and they used to keep the frequencies much lower. This is why you get audible track circuits. And if you listen to the rails on tracks still using systems with older style transistors with lower frequencies, you can often hear the track circuit. You can hear it at its loudest, right at a point where the detector is connected to the tracks. And there's some interesting things about the sound. The sound it makes isn't a constant pitched sound because naturally in the environment, you could possibly get a false positive. Imagine if there's some signal like, I don't know, a radio signal, there's some background signal that just so happened to be the exact same signal as the track circuit detector was expecting. That could interfere. So to get around that problem, they use an oscillating signal. A signal that sounds like this. Yee, 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 yee. 
and it's because it's continually oscillating the detector can send that signal into one valve and then detect whether that signal's presence is there in the other valve and because the signal is of a certain frequency and the frequency is oscillating within a set range it can detect precisely whether the signal it's hearing is its own signal or whether it's some other interference or some other signal and that is how the system works so here i'm at cuxton station and you can hear the audible track circuit quite clearly here let's have a listen Good luck,